Hi, my name is Joe Telegatis, and this is my teaching experience for ENME 605. In this presentation, I'm going to be introducing the topic of model predictive control and going over how this process works for a discrete linear time invariant system. So what is model predictive control? In class, we have most recently learned about how to implement feedback control. In this type of control, the plant receives an input and produces an output. The output is measured and then an observer estimates the current state of the system. A feedback gain is then applied to this state, which produces an input that is then fed back into the plant. In model predictive control, the process is quite different. After the observer estimates the current state of the system and feeds it to the controller, the model predictive controller predicts the future behavior of the system over some period of time. It then solves an optimization problem to determine what the next input to the system should be. This prediction and optimization cycle is then repeated every time the controller receives a new state estimate from the observer. One common example to demonstrate the difference is driving a car. A traditional feedback controller is like driving the car while only looking out the back window. The driver can give the car an input based on where the current location of the car is. In a model predictive controller, it's like driving the car looking down the road. The driver estimates the effect that their input will have on the car and then determines the optimum input for their desired output. This slide helps to further illustrate the process of model predictive control. At the current time k, the controller receives the measured output of the system. The controller solves an optimization problem to predict the optimum output of the system to reach the reference output over some constant time interval. This time interval is called the prediction horizon, and it is how far the controller looks into the future. The controller then predicts the control inputs needed for the optimal output over the time interval. The controller then feeds this input into the plant, as shown by the arrow. At the next time step, the controller repeats the process over the next time interval. The output is measured, the new optimum output and necessary input is predicted, the first input is delivered to the plant, and the process is repeated again and again. Now let's go over how MPC, or model predictive control, works for a discrete linear time invariant system. Here is our state space model. For simplicity, let's assume the D matrix is zero. Using the state space model, let's solve for our states at future times, starting at time k. Here's the state at time k plus one, k plus two, and time k plus three, all the way up to time k plus n, where np is the number of time steps in the prediction horizon. We can plug the equation from the previous state into the equation for the next state. We can do this all the way up to time k plus np. You can see that the state at any time is the A matrix to a power of the time step times the original state plus all the future input times times some A and B matrices. We can rewrite the future time states in the matrix form shown, where the bolded vectors are the future states and the future inputs and M and N are the prediction matrices shown. We can then determine any future state using the matrices in its row of the prediction matrices. Similarly, we can determine any future output as a function of the current state and the future inputs. Looking at the output equation, there are two unknowns, the vector of future inputs over the prediction horizon, and of course, the future outputs. However, instead of asking what the future output is, we can ask, what future inputs will give us our desired output? So how do we find the inputs that give us the desired outputs? This is just an optimization problem. Let's assume that over our prediction horizon, we can determine some cost of our output called J that is only a function of our current state and our future inputs. We want to find the optimum future inputs that minimize this cost J. I'm not going to go into the math here, but if you use the difference between the desired reference and the predicted outputs as the cost, you can formulate the cost function j to be the quadratic cost function, the same one that we used in class for our LQR design. 
This quadratic cost function is shown for a single time, where Q and R are the weighting matrices chosen by the control designer. We can then sum this cost over the entire prediction horizon. This summation gives us our cost function J for the entire prediction horizon as shown. And we can also apply constraints on our inputs. The H and G matrices can be found using the following summations, where the fancy R matrix is just the diagonal matrix of the R matrices. And the PF matrix can be found by solving the Lyapunov equation, where K is the fixed stabilizing feedback matrix of the LTI system, which you could determine using the LQR design we discussed in class. If we minimize J, we can find the optimum inputs over our prediction interval. Our controller can then deliver the first optimum input to the system and repeat the process all over again. Let's go over a quick example in MATLAB of how to solve this optimization problem for a single input system over one iteration with a prediction horizon of two time steps. Let's suppose at time k, our observer has told us our state variables are 1 and 2, and that we have been able to calculate our H and G matrices. Let's also place the constraint that our future inputs must be positive and that the difference from one input to the next cannot exceed 4. We can write this constraint in the following matrix form and determine the AC and BO matrices. Now that our optimization problem is in the correct form, we can use the MATLAB function quadprog and find our vector of optimum future inputs. Our controller can then feed the first input to our system. The arrow shows the first optimum input the controller will feed to the plant. This process will then be repeated for the next time step. In summary, the process of MPC control is to use a model to predict future plant dynamics, solve an optimization problem to determine the optimum inputs, and then feed this optimum input into the plant. Then this process is repeated at the next time step. Some of the advantages of MPC control are that because it is a multivariable approach, it can solve control problems where the inputs or outputs interact with one another. It can also explicitly handle constraints placed on the inputs and state variables. One major disadvantage is that it takes a lot of computational power because the optimization problem must be solved at every time step. For this reason, it has mainly been used in industries with slow dynamics, such as the petrochemical industry. Because the controller is nonlinear, there are also states that could cause the controller to become unstable. For this reason, it is often necessary to place constraints on the controller. I hope you learned something about model predictive control from this short video. If you would like to learn more, these are the references I used to create this video. The first is a textbook on active vibration control in smart materials, but it has a full two chapters on the basics of model predictive control. I also found this series of videos from MATLAB to be extremely helpful. Thanks for listening.